scratches on my skin All was simple It's complexity Always begging me to let you in I follow your silhouette Followed so easily so easy Ooh. and round and round and round we went they had to give in to me Ooh. and the answer is a mystery spoken softly like a sacred sin
followed so easy Ooh. And round and round and round we went Yet to give in to me Three days in a row. That's quite that's quite the, the streak we got going. <laughs> Four days, maybe? I think it's three, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Regardless, hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> so, uh, today we're going to be finishing up my, my Lego, my Lego build that I was working on. Uh, but I've also got, uh, uh, some, some toys to show you guys today. Well, one, one toy. I have one toy. <laughs> but, uh, I thought I would show you guys some of the Polaroids since we, since we talked about it yesterday. Uh, I thought I would, I thought I would pull those out and maybe we could, uh, just take a little look. Uh, <laughs> And then for those of you who uh, saw my Twitter last night, I finally realized why I was having so many issues with OBS chomping up all of my CPU. So it should be fixed now. So it shouldn't be laggy or anything too much anymore. Um, the d double model should be okay, but today today we're just doing just the one model. But uh, it makes it more a little easier to do both uh, in the future, so... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, and, oh, actually, also, I have one other, I have a new, I have one other change, one other fix, I suppose, but, uh, let me know if, let me know if you, if you hear much, 
wanna move this way. When I move this way. When I move this way. Which is back. My model doesn't really do that <laughs> with the settings I have. Uh, but then when I move forward, there's no squeaks. But there's minimal squeaks. <laughs> there's a couple creaks here and there, but <sighs> I finally took my chair out and uh, put some put some put some oil in like the the hinges, the the you know wherever oil seemed like it needed to go. I kind of just put it wherever. <laughs> Which is the second time I've, uh, had to do that, and I feel like, uh, every time that- well, it's probably- I've probably needed to do it more than that, but it's the second time I've ever actually done it. <laughs> I've just sort of been annoyed at my squeaky chairs, uh, otherwise. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, so, no more- no more loud squeaks while we're in the ASMR category. <laughs> I can move! I don't have to worry about shifting my weight two inches to the left, causing horrific metallic squeals. <laughs> oh. But it's funny every time I every time I have had uh, every time I have done that, I, I there's something about like holding a can of like WD-40 in my garage, like on my knees, like oiling this chair. I'm like, I'm like I feel like a I feel like a tired. A tired blue collar mechanic who's just trying to feed his wife and kids. <laughs> I'm just, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's just funny. But yeah, so, uh, we'll just kind of probably start off with this a little bit to, uh, to warm up tonight. We'll get back into our Legos afterwards. And then if we finish that, uh, in a timely manner tonight. Uh, probably no, like, four or five hour streams like yesterday, but, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> but if we do finish that up in a timely manner and have a little bit of, uh, time and energy left over afterwards. Uh, there was a game that came out on Steam called Shashingo. Uh, and it's, it's like a, uh, a, a game for Japanese learning. Uh, you can like go around and take, actually I think you take, I think they, like the pictures are framed as like Polaroids, I could be wrong, but, uh, which is a funny coincidence, I didn't even think about that until now. <laughs> but you go around and it's, it's, I don't even know if it's so much of like, it's, I don't think there's anything necessarily like, to do, you know, it's not like a story or anything, but it's literally just you wander around and you take pictures and uh like the game tells you what uh the things you take pictures of are called in japanese and then it gives you like a couple of related words it should be it looks like fun so we're gonna we're gonna maybe give it a try later but uh yee so uh first i just wanted to show you guys this because this is one of my favorite my favorite toys one of my favorite things that i own so uh we did zoom in a little bit i don't know if it looks that way or not, but <laughs> we are more zoomed in, so we should uh, should have a little bit of an easier time, uh, maybe seeing seeing things a little bit. But uh, this was uh, it's a long story. This is the same model of camera that I brought with me to Japan. It's not the exact same one. I still have that one. It's a long story, <laughs> but. Uh, so this is uh, the SX70. I actually can't remember the name of the company that makes it right offhand. Um, but yeah, so this is the uh, uh, Polaroid camera that I really like to use. And I specifically like to use it because of... I have to be careful with the reflections. <laughs> uh, because of this here because this was actually the first model of Polaroid cameras um, that had uh, 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 autofocus. And it's, it's kind of a cool way that it does it too. It actually uses sound waves. It uses like a, it, uh, it's almost like a, kind of like echolocation kind of thing where 
uh, this will actually, uh, or I think, I think it's like, it might even be like ultrasound waves. I can't remember exactly. That, that sounds correct, but regardless. So this will actually, uh, uh, like bounce sound waves out and then calculate like how, how long it takes for them to get back. Um, and then it, it figures out essentially how, like, what distance it should focus on stuff, uh, based on that. Uh, and then, uh, uh, sort of an interesting quirk of that is you actually can't really take pictures of stuff through glass, because the sound waves will bounce off of the glass, uh, and you will be, your, your camera will be trying to focus on the glass instead of whatever is behind it. Which, if it's close, then it's okay, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I did make that mistake once and immediately saw how fuzzy my picture was, and I was like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so I thought I would show you some of my... Some of my photographs that I took. Look at this photograph! <laughs> uh, so, this is actually the one I thought I'd start with. Because this was, uh, my apartment building. Uh, which I don't really mind. Oh, I still have a little bit of... Still got a little, like, oil or something on my finger. Gross. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... This was... Oh, let me get a little bit closer. I mean, so I don't mind sharing this now. But yeah, so this was uh, where I was staying. Uh, it was a very, very uh, nice little like kind of back street. Uh, but it was it was very convenient for some of the places I need to go. <laughs> but uh, let's see, what do we got? I don't even. I actually don't even remember exactly what all I have in here. Uh, these ones? Yeah, I think these are from the same place. Yeah, so... Uh, these... These couple... Were from... Uh, I believe these were from a shrine that was up north of Tokyo. Uh, gosh, what's it called? Let me see, I can find it real quick. Uh, Shogu Shrine. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, so I actually learned something that I had I had no idea of about like uh, this particular shrine in Japan uh, when I was there. So, Toshogu Shrine has uh is actually where the like see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, uh, like uh, monkey visual came from. Um, or at least I, I, that's what I remember. <laughs> I believe that's correct. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this is the the shrine that has a uh, um, the original like imagery of that. Uh, and oh my god, it was, it's it's uh, it's in a place called Nikko, and it's such a beautiful place. We went up there during uh, like fall. And you can see in the pictures here a little bit, like, yeah, sort of some of the, uh, the leaves and everything, the red. Um, and there were some parts of, of that place that was just, it, it was just all, like, like, nothing but, like, red and orange and, and, oh, oh, so pretty. <laughs> um, and there was a... Uh, I believe there was a waterfall there that we went to. Um, yeah, and, and the shrine itself had like all of these. Uh, uh, it was ba I think it was a lot of the architecture was based on like uh, five emperors, I believe. That that uh, like five like historical figures, where. Uh, 
each one was like had their their like zodiac sign they're like I, I think it was their Chinese zodiac sign that was like carved into a statue for a building that like helped like represent them something like that but I remember there was there was a cat a dragon uh, I can't remember what else but funny enough I actually I don't think the monkey thing was one of them <laughs> I actually think the like see no evil hear no evil speak no evil thing is like part of a set of imagery that is like a wider story um i believe that's like essentially supposed was like supposed to depict like um like the pathway of life or something and something i believe the please don't quote me on any of this this is purely going off of my memory of things that i learned once a year and a half ago <laughs> but uh yeah so the the uh the monkeys, I believe, were supposed to be, like, representative of, like, like, parents, like, teaching their children or something like that, or, like, children learning, um, like, to be good, essentially, something like that. Um, and then this, this is a shrine that I remember, but I do not, <laughs> I do not know the name of it, like, even a little bit. <laughs> Um, let me get this a little closer, it's hard not to be, block my, my face tracking. This was actually the first shrine that I think I ever went to in, uh, in Tokyo. Or not, this one wasn't in Tokyo, this one was in... Gosh, gosh, gosh. Um, I think I can find it. like a particular delicacy of this town that was like uh, uh, some sort of like it wasn't like salmon roe or anything but it was some sort of other like fish egg something based dish I think oh gosh what was it <laughs> offhand I'm not gonna spend too long trying to search for it but yeah I think the uh you know just like <laughs> there's it's kind of so many so much history that you learn about like all of these shrines that it sometimes it gets a bit hard to uh <laughs> differentiate <laughs> um mm -hmm. uh, Oh, these ones I know for sure what shrine this was. Yeah, so this is this is one of the shrines. I have four pictures of it actually, but that's because I went like three times. <laughs> um, and it's it was the uh, Fushimi Nari Shrine in uh, Kyoto. So I believe that's what these are all of. I know. I know for a fact three of them are. The only one I'm wondering about is this one, but I believe that was, which is not the greatest of photograph, but that's how Polaroids are sometimes. You know, you got a little bit of the ink and everything that kind of bled. Eee, so there's that one. I think this one was from my first trip. Uh, I can't remember if this was the the top. No, this actually no. This one I think this is the top of the uh, the shrine 
So this one was uh, uh, on my second trip that I took shortly before I left. Um, so this was uh, right at the top of Fushimi Nari. Uh, I know this picture was also from the second time that I went. Uh, because the, the first time that I went, I did not go all the way up the mountain because uh, I was I was just a little strapped for time. Uh, I, I went on essentially like the the morning of my last day in Kyoto before I was headed back to Tokyo. Um, and uh, admittedly, I, I, I was having a little bit of a hard time at that point. That was sort of a, uh, a time where uh, I, I, this was probably about a month after, a couple months after I'd uh, kind of gotten settled in, in Japan, but uh, some of the, the homesickness and the, the, the isolation and stuff was, was getting to me. So I had kind of a hard time actually going anywhere on that trip. But, uh, the, uh, I, I kind of, I, I knew that Fushimi and Ari was like a place I really wanted to go. So I really kind of pushed myself to go, uh, this last morning before I caught my train back. Um, and it, it's truly like, like it, it is just an experience I, I will never forget because it was uh I actually this was before tourism had opened back up so it was like almost empty it was like almost uh, like entirely <laughs> nobody there um and I went really early in the morning so it was very foggy it was still chilly um and just getting to kind of go like even just like halfway up the mountain um was just it, it was just like you know like i said it, i was i was kind of going through it at that time and that's okay you know we all we all go through it from time to time um but like f for all of the stress and everything I was dealing with during that first, uh, that first trip. It was, it was so incredibly worth it. <laughs> uh, and then this one was just another, another shot of, uh, some of the, the tour gates and stuff. This one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, qu I had a, I questioned myself as to whether that was Fushimi Nori for a second, but and then this one uh, is actually from a, this was the view from uh, a little town in very, very, very uh, like Western Japan called Kinosaki. And they are known for, uh, they're called the Seven Mystic Onsen. <laughs> And so it's it's like this little onsen town that uh yeah it's like it's very hard to get to if I'm being honest but it's it's it was so worth it it's it's basically like the the thing that people go there and do is they will uh, go and essentially like tour around the town you, you can literally just walk around and get like a day pass for these onsen and you just go from like one to the next to the next to the next to the next <laughs> and so I went and did that and uh I had a uh a little uh ryokan room that I had rented there um that was just it was just the the uh it was a very nice place, and I have some very funny stories from there, but, uh, we'll save those maybe for, for another time. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it was, this was true, like, going here was truly, like, probably one of the most perfect capstones that I, I could have asked for on my trip. Um, I really wanted to go explore like some kind of small town Japan. I didn't want to just stay in like Tokyo, uh, it, which was kind of nerve wracking for me to do <laughs> from time to time because 
uh my japanese was not very good you know i could i could get my basic my basic stuff across you know uh i could you know tell people my name tell people i had a reservation tell people like what i was wanting to eat if i was looking for something you know uh the issue was sort of if there was any miscommunication mm. <laughs> but you know of course there's always google translate that was <laughs> extraordinarily helpful for me uh multiple times when i got into a pinch but uh yes yeah, so this, this was a uh a super beautiful place like it's for, for anybody that that goes to japan like I don't know that I would recommend going to Kinosaki for a first trip, just because it's so far. But if you're going, like, for a second time, and you want, like, a, uh, you want to go to something a little more distant, to kind of get off of the, uh, the beaten track, um, uh, Kinosaki is truly so far out. It's, I mean, of course, they do get foreign tourists and stuff, but, uh, um, I saw, I, I saw a fair number of, of uh, other foreigners when I was there, but it, it was um, not not anything like like going to Kyoto or anything like that. <laughs> it's it's much harder to get to. Like I said, I had to go to uh, Kyoto, and then I had to take a bus from Kyoto. I think, and then I had to take another train. <laughs> to get to Kinosaki. Um, so it's not, not the easiest place to get to, but well worth it. Um, oh, I didn't, I realized I didn't actually unfold the camera and show you guys. So this, uh, this here is like a flash, uh, component that you can add on. It's not actually part of the, the base camera, but I just think this camera is so fun and it's a little dramatic in a good way, uh, because it, does. Let me see if I can remember how to do it. I haven't used this in a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So it actually like unfolds and uh, kind of clicks into place. It's, oh, I just, I love stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, so this was the uh, one of the sort of models of camera that I took to, uh, to Japan and had a lot of... Uh, I was able to take a lot of, uh, I don't know if they're good photos, but they're photos that are memorable for me. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, that, that just kind of came up in conversation yesterday when we were chatting. So. I just wanted to show you guys. <laughs> just wanted to reminisce a little bit. I know I have some other Polaroids somewhere, I just don't know exactly where they are just at this moment. <laughs> but now I think we're going to go ahead and switch back over. We're going to go ahead and get back to our, our Lego build. And for those of you who were not here yesterday, uh, welcome in. And uh, I'll show you guys what we're building real quick. Uh, we are building the bonsai tree from the botanical collection, uh, which is the first Lego set I've done probably ever. <laughs> I don't think I ever really played with Legos as a kid, so uh, like, you know, here and there, but I never had like a set of anything that I built, you know, so uh yeah we're just gonna we're gonna continue on this <laughs> it's so funny switching from my like polaroids of japan back to my bonsai tree lego build and i'm like i <laughs> points finger weeb oh <laughs> uh, but uh yeah so let's go ahead and still got all of our pieces here I'll maybe lay this down long ways for now just so it's easier to see try to be a little quiet about this yeah. 
So we've got some of our, our pieces from yesterday. <laughs> uh, garage stuff. Whenever I get in the garage to do anything, I play either Rust music or the Home Depot theme. <laughs> Uh, the Home Depot theme is pretty good. I didn't even know Home Depot had a theme. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to identify it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. So what do we need here? So this is... Okay, this is done, I believe. There we go. Look it up, you'll remember it instantly. <laughs> I'll have to try, I'll try and uh, remember to do that after a stream because I am curious. <laughs> Alright, so. We've got this big, this little chunky boy piece right here. We've got this tiny, this uh, longer piece. Boop. Then we have oh, a shorter piece. This one needs to go down here. Actually, I will admit, I thought this was something that felt like it was maybe a little like over designed, like a Lego separator. But I'm eating my. I, I don't know if I ever said it, so I guess I'm eating my thoughts. I'm not eating my words. <laughs> uh, but no, it's actually turned out to be quite helpful. <laughs> okay, there's that. I think we want to. Want a big boy piece for this, right? Yeah. There we go. And then the even bigger boy piece. Oh, that's backwards. go here we go oh, ninja hello yeah we're doing legos we're making a bonsai tree mm -hmm. and we're starting to see the tree why didn't i eat before stream i just realized i'm so hungry <laughs> i'll have to go get a snack in a second i'm sorry i should have done that before stream i didn't I didn't think about the fact that I was hungry, so I didn't realize it. <laughs> hmm. Okay, yeah. Wait, right side or left side? Right side, okay. I know, I know. Huh? Should I do this wrong? I think I did do that wrong. Yeah, this should be down here. Okay, that's why that X piece wasn't snapping in. Get your snacky. Yeah, I gotta get my snackies and wash my hands. Gosh, I already did, but there's still like <laughs> still smudges from oiling my chair on there. 
Mm. I'm just like, it's not like I'm purposefully not try trying not to eat or anything. I just forget. <laughs> I forget that's a thing I'd have to do as a as a as a human person. <laughs> Here. But yeah, I was I was very glad I was able to get that those stream setting things figured out because uh, uh I was trying to stream at like uh, you know 1080 resolution, 60 frames per second, all that um, before and with like like good bit rate and all that, and my computer was just not having it. <laughs> Because I was trying to process it all on the CPU with like VTube Studio and stuff, but now I can now I can keep the stuff at a uh, a nicer quality, and my computer isn't going to turn itself into a microwave. <laughs> this should line up up here, I believe. Which it does, which is good to know. Because <laughs> if it didn't, I wouldn't know how to fix that. Okay. So we've got our, our tree trunk coming along. Ooh, now we get to add the big fun pieces. Okay, so I need three of these. in too deep or should they just go as much as you can push them ah okay as much as you can push them I understand mm -hmm. okay so we've got one here Gosh, what? What? Why? Oh no. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Wait, we can fix this. We have the technology. <laughs> we can fix this. We have the technology. We can fix this. We have the technology. Oh my gosh, it's like all falling apart. Okay. No stress. No stressing. We can fix this. No need to stress. <laughs> okay, crisis averted. Crisis averted. <laughs> Figured it out. <laughs> That's scary. 
That's what I mean when I was saying yesterday, I'm kind of clumsy. <laughs> I just feel like I accidentally do stuff like that a lot. <laughs> okay, this one goes on the back piece here, it seems. Just kind of wind that way. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, it's the first time these Lego vine elements have appeared in a reddish brown color. New, unique, fresh. Now the question is just where I put those. <laughs> I literally saw them like five minutes ago, so I know they're here somewhere. <laughs> Where did I put them? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Tycho's. Do Tycho's come in here looking for snacks? <laughs> this is an act. This isn't an activity for Tycho. This is a meal. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna leave to go get a snack and Tycho's gonna gobble up all the Legos. <laughs> I'm a fool, where did I put them? grab a snack real quick uh and then i'll come back and when i come back in here i'll shuffle things around a little bit and see if i can find those vines because i know they're here uh but uh now that i've remembered that i have a human person that must eat i'll be right back <laughs> yeah, yeah please please taiko oh, please don't eat all the legos leave me a few <laughs> I'll be right back.
I cannot seem to find those pieces. Hmm. Which is strange because I've literally seen them sitting at my desk all day and have been making mental notes of, all right, don't put these anywhere weird because you're not going to remember where they are. <laughs> but, uh, I suppose we will just continue without them and hope that I can add them later, which is not ideal. Give me one more second to see if I can find it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got a, uh, we got a, we got a snack for now and a snack for later. <laughs> if my high school self ever saw me calling this a snack, I would have headshotted myself on site. No scope. <laughs> Taken myself out. <laughs> I would not have allowed for that. <laughs> Oh, adult, adulthood changes us all. <laughs> Sorry, I ate them. No, Tygo! <laughs> That's the, the, the thing where you're like, what are you chewing? Hey, hey, what are you chewing on? No, spit it out, spit it out! I've had them in the same spot since last night. Well, anyway, regardless, I'm not gonna make you guys sit and watch me hunt for them for an hour. <laughs> Sprinting around the house with lost Legos in my mouth. No, please, I need those back. refueled a little bit so we'll move along I swear this the moment I do a step where you cannot access <laughs> those spots anymore I know the moment after I do that I'm going to find those vines <laughs> hmm Staying up at 11.59, next to a Lego build, one piece away from completion to see if Tycho appears Santa style. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. Okay, so I need this. Other one here. Just goes here. 
Uh, losing small pieces of plastic to an unknowable void near your desk. Lego builders. Handshake Gumpla builders. <laughs> yeah, that seems... It seems like a frustrating but not uncommon thing that would probably happen to me. <laughs> Will probably happen to me, assuming I continue with this. Hmm... This is like, they have like little like factoids about their pieces on a couple of the pages, like the, uh, I guess these root pieces were used as like elephant trunks. Uh, or that, that was the original purpose of them. That's kind of fun. They have little, uh, stuff like that. Hmm. They're all on opposite sides, so... Well, I thought we got it. We did not. <laughs> hey, there we go. Alright. Okay. Okay, we got something. We got something going. We got a... We got a tree. Sort of. <laughs> hmm. Let me use a couple of extra pieces. Let's kind of shuffle those out of the way. Okay, so now baggy number three. So I think baggy number three is literally just like pieces that you're dumping in this bottom part here. <laughs> trying to figure I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> I'm like because there's the bag had like one set of a uh, uh, little like pebbles but then it also has another set and I was like okay maybe they're supposed to be used with like the different colors of, of petals because you can do either uh, pink like cherry blossoms or you can just do green but it looks like they just add them all in so I'm curious as to why they separated them <laughs> <laughs> Jay, I still just keep seeing your message and it's just like, I swear that's like one of the most like universal uh, experiences of frustration is just like having like tiny, tiny little things at your desk that just disappear. They just are gone. <laughs> you look away for, for a little too long and they decide to wander off. Nice noise. <laughs> huh. 
<laughs> Just ASMR does things. Picking something up and being like, wait, I have to shake it first. <laughs> hmm. Alright. So, just get these in here. Oh no, they're going everywhere. <laughs> and if you want less rocks, if you want certain ones, yeah, 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 I guess that makes sense. It's just, it just seems kind of funny when they have <laughs> the picture of them all mixed together. <laughs> Yogg Sothoth hungers for model plastic. <laughs> oh. Well, who am I to question? <laughs> hmm. Evenly dispersed, you know? Ah. No, an escapee. Okay, I found it. <laughs> Which was uh, honestly unnecessary. Uh, I, I was gonna have to search for that one because. <laughs> this this is cat food it's not supposed to be cat food but my cat will turn it into cat food <laughs> the same way that he does with literally every plastic bag that i bring home and do not carefully protect <laughs> want to do the petals last so I think I'm gonna build the stand here first because like I said uh, last night I kind of like the display elements of that that's why I really liked this set Plus, I feel like finishing it with all the greenery and everything is sort of the, uh, the piece de resistance. <laughs> yeah, and once I, once I find those, uh, vines, it looks like that shouldn't be any problem to add those on. section of all neutrals all the time <laughs> then we get to the fun colors 
cat owner experience buys all kinds of cute and cool toys what the cat actually plays with chewing on cardboard and knocking around plastic bottle caps yo <laughs> I'm like, you have toys that have plastic on them that you can chew. That's like meant for that. You can do that. Why you gotta eat the plastic you're not supposed to be eating? <laughs> okay. Take a couple more bites of your vegetables. Play on pause. Hold on, wait. Just, just, just one moment. <laughs> we, we have to go back. Willis, go back. Back where? We're already in Colorado. I feel like at one point of my life, I could verbatim quote the entire Digimon movie. <laughs> <laughs> Willis, back to the beginning doesn't mean back to Colorado. <laughs> uh, the Digimon movie was wild. Yeah, the fact that it was three movies smash cut into one movie was a wild, that was a wild thing. <laughs> the fact that American movie producers just was like, they were like, yeah, that's three movies? Not here, it ain't. <laughs> Which really does make sense when you when you watch it again as like not a child, and you're like, some of this is sort of disjointed feeling, and then you learn that it was three movies smash cut into one. <laughs> it it truly is a moment of just being like, you know, I didn't know that, but it also doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> just the uh i think one of the funniest moments is just like when uh davis starts like sobbing uh over something willis told him and he's like he's like in tears and then like willis was what does it say he says about like why are you crying i'm the one with the problem and davis just goes okay <laughs> and it just cuts back to him fine <laughs> and uh, that's yeah that's the saddest story i've ever heard <laughs> that's the saddest story i ever heard <laughs> and then just okay <laughs> oh i need to be alone great i'll go with you <laughs> it's such a good movie i need to rewatch that movie to be honest uh Oh my god, the Angela Anacondo, uh, Anacondo, Anaconda short was insane. Wild. <laughs> the green text where a guy tells the story of how the Angela Anaconda, an an why do I keep saying that? Why do I keep saying condo? Angela Anaconda intro causes parents to divorce. I did, I've seen that. <laughs> Jesus, it's crazy. Nothing beats Ty's mom making fucked up food. What was it she made? Like, uh, s like spinach shakes or something like that in the movie? It was something like that. Potato shakes, that's what it was. Honestly, okay, controversial. I think if you did that right, I don't think that would be the worst thing in the world. I think there's, I think, I think Ty's mom was on to something. <laughs> She's an innovator. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, it's such a good, there's so many quotes that are so good from it. Uh, anyway, I gotta put these vines on now that I found them. Ooh. <laughs> I 
<laughs> do you want three bean salad? No thanks. That's okay. I only have two beans anyway. <laughs> it's... That movie was a gem. It's underappreciated. And adolescent me was determined to show it all of the appreciation it deserved. <laughs> Focused, I shoved my face under my camera. <laughs> oh. Okay, that goes there. Like, don't do this to me. Where did I put the other one? <laughs> I can't do this again. I'm not strong enough. Five French fries is what you want? Well, no, not that exactly. I just think that we shouldn't be afraid of adventure. <laughs> I say being extraordinarily afraid of adventure. <laughs> and it all ended with Smash Mouth. Wait, okay, no, hold on. We have to talk about the Digimon soundtrack. We have to talk about the Digimon soundtrack. Who... Why did it go so hard? Why did that... Like, let me pull up the list of what was on the Digimon soundtrack. Like, why was the Digimon, like, OST, like, a ska... Like, it was... It was... There was... Uh, there was so many bangers on that soundtrack. Okay, we got we got the Digi Rap, we got Kids in America, we got the impression that I get by the Mighty Mighty Boss Stones. Uh, we've got Nowhere Near by Summer Camp, Going Digital, Jason Radford, All My Best Friends Are Metalheads, Less Than Jake, All Star Smash Mouth, Rockefeller Skank by Fat Boy Slim, One Week by Bare Naked Ladies. Run around, Jason Radford. Here we go, Jason Gochin. It's just like truly every single one of these songs is good. Like every one of them. What happened here? <laughs> Localizer is being unsure of what to put for lines, so they just make a snappy two liner in <laughs> such a time capsule. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it was a wild movie. It's, it's, the Digimon soundtrack, I would listen to the Digimon soundtrack today. <laughs> I might, after stream, I might put it on. 
Oh, Jay, hello. Thank you for the raid. Hello, hello. Good to see you. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you had a good stream. <laughs> Next. Oh, well, fancy seeing you. <laughs> mm, Artemis Apollo. Hello, hello. Jay Ray. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I hope you had a good stream. We're just keeping it nice and calm over here tonight. I'm just building my Lego. Welcome in to, uh, to everybody that's stopping by. Nice and cozy. Good, 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 good. Who's <laughs> dual watching both of you? What were you working on, Jay? Or what were you doing? Were you playing a game or working on something? Or <laughs> what were you up to tonight? So far, we've uh, mostly just been trying to get this put together. He just came into us to, to me fawning over the Digimon movie. <laughs> mm. Rambling for a few hours. Hey, I love those kinds of streams, though. That's fun. Hope you got to talk about some fun stuff. <laughs> but yeah, for, for all of you who are uh, coming in, welcome in. My name is Salem. I'm an ASM artist over on uh, YouTube. And I do... Uh, Mostly just like, call, I alternate between just chill vibe streams and playing League of Legends. <laughs> the two opposite ends of the spectrum, I'm right here and I oscillate <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. With lurking while getting ready to raid. Ah, oh, thank you for the lurk. The LST does go hard for real. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite the uh, the. It it it's just very much like a time capsule of the of when it came out, but in like a good way. Uh you know, sometimes like you you watch old movies or, or stuff, and you're like, this is dated, and that's not good. Did the Digimon soundtrack is dated, but in a good way. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, for, for anybody here, I highly recommend checking Jay out too. He's got some, some, some cute streams and everything. Would 10 out of 10 would recommend. So thank you again for stopping by. Lee, but who do you play? I play, I'm a, I'm a Briar main. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a filthy, filthy Briar main. <laughs> we do manage to keep it pretty calm even when I'm running it down top lane. <laughs> Okimi, hello, hello. She came out after I stopped playing. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I I just got into Lee. I I actually she was the first character I ever really played. So <laughs> I only got into League like four months ago, three or four four months. It must have been about four months ago now. Love seeing fan art of her though. People do such cool things with their shackles. She's so cute. She is very cute. There was a, I saw some cat girl briar art, um, on Twitter the other day, and it was just, it was so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and also just real quick, this is uh, the finished product of what we're what we're working on today so this is this is where we're trying to get to started it last night worked on it for a few hours should have finished considering how long uh, how long we worked on it but I'm I'm a slow moving creature <laughs> How can you play League so calmly? I end up stressing about my team. <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, like, there are definitely times where I get, like, stressed. I'm not, I am not immune to the, the gamer molding. Uh, but I just, when I get to that point, I just decide that I'm done. <laughs> you know, like, just, uh, it's just a matter of being like, okay, this is, more frustrating than fun for me right now, so I'm gonna put it down and come back when it's more fun than frustrating. <laughs> this went down 
here. But I'm not I'm not much outside of League. Like I have a couple select games that I really like, but I'm not really much of a gamer. Uh, if I'm being entirely honest, so something about that I think helps. <laughs> <laughs> oh no okay crisis averted wait not a crisis averted hold on okay <laughs> hold on out without breaking the entire thing and having to start over. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, we'll set this to the side. This will probably come off anyway, so I'll pull that off and set that to the side. <laughs> back in here uh, <laughs> how I'm going to do that is a good question is not supposed to be stressful <laughs> okay crisis averted <laughs> I think I have to empty these out to get this back in there okay and now I just had a branch that I needed to put in here and where I put it it's a good question you would think with like a one foot by one foot workspace, it would be harder for me to lose things. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try and just put these all here so I can... Ah, here we are. I'm just sort of dump them back in afterwards. <laughs> This little bonsai tree build, nothing to fret over. The build, hold my tiny intricate pieces, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Let's get this here first. The problem with this is just that you have to be ginger with it, and as we discussed yesterday, I'm not the most delicate of people, <laughs> as much as I wish I were. Let's see if we can get this back in here without <laughs> taking everything apart again. Okay, we can. There we go. Crisis averted once again. Gosh, yesterday went so smoothly, and today it's like, that's like crisis number three. <laughs> Maybe crisis is a dramatic word. Maybe I'm being dramatic. <laughs> it's entirely possible. <laughs> mm. Mm 
Also, just real quick, hello to uh, all of the new followers. Thank you so much for uh, for choosing to stick around. I appreciate it. Feel free to get cozy, lurk if you'd like. Feel free to grab a snack. I've got a couple of my own. We're just gonna be vibing, just chilling. <laughs> made progress to get right back to where we were <laughs> okay now we can finally start the uh the base Okay, I understand what this means. I was a little confused when I saw this before, but I think this means that we need to just build two of these. So I just need to do this whole process twice. Okay, I understand. So we'll do all of the steps at the same time. So we'll go one, two, sort of like ledge pieces those in here no I think they are it looks like it yeah I see some some ledges oh by the way Jay just if, if you're still here I'm just curious when you did play league uh who was your main I realized I didn't ask <laughs> I'm curious or what what uh what position did you play i'm i'm pretty exclusively a jungler but mostly because <laughs> i want to try top lane briar but laning is scary <laughs> hmm. uh, hey voices beautiful homie thank you i appreciate it nova <laughs> Okay, so I need this way to offset it a little bit. Boop. Laning is scary, says the jungler. Yeah, but the thing is, like, so, like, I, I feel like in... In League, it's like, if you if, if you lose like a Drake or something, um, it's it's not a big deal. Like, you know, but like, being like the first person to like lose tower, like I personally, like I don't, like I don't, like think anything about it. You know, I, I, get, I get, like sometimes you're just in a bad matchup, you know, maybe you're a newer player learning. I get it. But like, I feel like not everybody does. And the idea of just like getting like hard countered and just demolished in your lane is so scary to me. <laughs> like with jungling, you know, at least in the early game, the kind of the 
if not the majority of the time, at least a significant part of it, I'm just running around in my funky little forest killing monsters. <laughs> I don't have to I don't have to worry about last hitting a minion. My la it's tr truly you can tell when I go into like ARAMs and I'm trying to uh to like hit minions or you know for, just uh do a do a little farming in ARAMs. <laughs> um you can tell I'm a jungler or an earth uh because I do not know my last hit timing. I don't I don't have to think about it. <laughs> Um, well, I'm looking in the wrong pile. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, jungling is much less scary than uh, laning is. <laughs> Try to keep these separate. Hmm, okay, so now we need... Two of these little guys. Just two little guys. Actually, four little guys, since... Got two of these. All right. Boop. Shirako. I think that's what it was. The fish egg delicacy. Was that it? Hold on. Why did that just pop into my head? <laughs> This is something I was talking about, like, <laughs> at the beginning of stream. <laughs> is this... No, 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 it wasn't Shirako. There's a, uh... Uh... Another, another food I was trying to think of from Japan. Uh... But that was, that was not it. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I'm not my. I'm, I apologize, uh, uh, Nia. My my bot has been a little bit on the fritz lately, so uh, normally that command should give you a familiar. Uh, <laughs> let me actually see. It should be in here. Okay, I changed something real quick, so let me see what we get if this works. There we go. Oh, I got a butterfly familiar today. Cute. I'm happy with that. There we go. Yeah, now you can go ahead and get your familiars. Just enjoy the vibes. I'm glad. I appreciate it. Really is calming. It's nice. Hey! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's so many familiar is on that list and the fact that it gave you bat twice in a row is wild <laughs> yeah there you go why is it giving him why is it giving the same twice in a row is that just like really insane luck or it's not even good luck or bad luck it's just a coincidence <laughs> I don't know what, uh, huh. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, 
I promise, there's all kinds of like mythological stuff on there too right now, I guess. I guess Nightbot is just feeling like giving out uh, more mundane familiars today. Just okay? <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> we got an angel. <laughs> hmm. I stand corrected immediately. <laughs> Okay, so we need two of these tall boy pieces. We got a salamander wolf. Hmm, I've ascended. <laughs> hmm. It's funny, it's happened a couple times where it's like, somebody will uh, do that and get an angel for, for a familiar and then immediately somebody else will do it and they'll get like a demon and it's like oh nightbot chose violence <laughs> a swarm of locusts and he got that biblical familiar <laughs> Okay, and now I need some. What are those? Some funky pieces. Uh, I need four of these little funky doodads. There was another command. Uh, ooh, Ninja got a dragon. No one would want to mess with a swarm of locusts. Yeah, no, if I met another witch that had a familiar with a swarm of locusts, I'm not messing with them. But they, they have the power of God and anime on their side, and I will not be messing with that. <laughs> ah, fortune. I forgot about the fortune uh, command. Yeah, I, was, I, I remembered... I remembered... It was there, but I also did not remember what the command was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm, okay, so we need like some four of those. We got one. Got two. We've got three. And we've got four. pieces I think I'm doing this correctly. I'm unsure, but I think I am. <laughs> so let's go three pieces. There we go. This fortune once per stream. I don't actually, I don't know. I mean, you can do it again. <laughs> you could check. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even sure. <laughs> I think, uh, I think what we had come up with before was 
if you're blessed, I, I think that the it, it's it lasts until lasts until midnight. I think it was. So temporary, temporary boons and banes. <laughs> too long. That's not, that's definitely not the right piece. <laughs> we go. other pieces. Here we go. Here's one. And another. Ah, here we go. I really do think I picked up that tongue clicking thing from from GB. <laughs> I don't I never uh I don't remember doing like any sort of tongue clicking like as a habit uh until I started watching ASMR and I I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure GB does that a lot. Um but it might have just been something I picked up from like various ASMR videos. <laughs> Because I find myself doing that, not all the time, but frequently enough that I've noticed the pattern of just... <laughs> mm, you been doing any D&D &D things recently? Well, uh, I did ha I, uh, I've, I've done some D&D &D stuff recently, absolutely. <laughs> so, my, uh... I unfortunately had to uh, to miss the most recent session of one of my campaigns because it's uh, it, we usually start at like ten or eleven uh, a.m. and it was like seven a.m. and I had not been able to get to sleep yet and I was like I don't I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this <laughs> um, so but. Uh, was not able to make it, but I guess we did we we did level up during that session, so I get to make my my little uh, my my little reborn circle of stars druid level nine. The uh, we've recently been exploring some um like this cursed little town uh, that popped up out of nowhere, and there was like. Uh, there was a church that fought us. <laughs> it, all these, like, essentially, like, 
we don't know exactly what's going on. Well, maybe they know what's going on. I wasn't, I had to miss the last session, so <laughs> I might have missed some info. But uh, yeah, we were exploring some, this like cursed little village uh, and trying to figure out what the heck was going on. Uh, and then in my other campaign with my, my necromancer, uh, my necromancer priest, uh, Fyodor, oh, oh, it's, I forgot his full name for a second, uh, Yanukovic Fyodorovsky, my, uh, my totally not Russian, Russian necromancer. <laughs> uh, he lives in fantasy Russia. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, he, uh, uh, recently... Well, I was gonna say he became a god, sort of, a little bit. But he doesn't think he became a god, so it's complicated. He's very theological. <laughs> um, but he's, funny enough, uh, uh, <laughs> Danny can attest to this, uh, he is <laughs> sort of, I don't think it's, uh, wrong to say a little bit of the moral center of the party and <laughs> it's been it's been struggling a little bit lately um so yeah a lot lot going on there <laughs> uh but that's actually that's not for a D, D game that's for another system called uh, worlds without number which is truly one of my favorite systems that i've ever tried highly highly recommend it it's by uh a game designer named Kevin Crawford, who writes stupendous games. Uh, there's Worlds Without Number, which is like fantasy, Cities Without Number, which is steampunk, uh, Stars Without Number, which is sci-fi, um, and they all use very similar systems, which is cool because going from one to another, like, it's very, very easy to, to know what's kind of going on and how things should be working. But also, um, there's still, like, enough freshness in each system. Like, uh, our Worlds Without Number game is actually, like, uh, a continuation of the universe from a game that we had played uh, in the Stars Without Number universe. It's just, like, you know, much, 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 much time later. Um, and, like, uh, Worlds Without Number, like, base world is sort of a the the like you, you don't have to use like the books sort of folklore uh but if you choose to the the uh everything in it is very it's like a dying world type uh setting where it's like it, it, it's very cool i highly recommend checking out worlds without number um the thing i like about it most is like the magic system is very unique in that, like, first of all, the spells are generally not very combat-oriented. There are some. You can do damage with spells, but they're, that's not the intention, Mag necessarily. Magic is more obscure um, in Worlds Without Number, so there are a lot of strange effects that you can make with it. Um, it's meant to be more utility than it is combat. Um, so, and, and there's, like, a lot of all the spells have like crazy names uh like there's like one that's called like violation of the inexorable execution or something like that it, that's not the exact name but it's it's all um uh there's one like high level spell that's called like banishment to the black glass labyrinth um there's what else is there uh, uh, the grinding gesh. It's very, very cool. I highly recommend it if you like magic systems, because it's, in my opinion, this game is truly like a perfect balance of like complexity, and it has some elements of like OSR, um, or like old school role playing games, um, but it doesn't have the crunchiness of them. It's very approachable in my opinion. Those all sound terrifying, cool, but terrifying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love, I love the, the spells in that system. Because, like, D&D, honestly, I, I admit, honestly, since trying Kevin Crawford's games, I, I'm a little more 
I wouldn't say bored with the spells in D&D, but they're very combat oriented, which makes sense. D&D started as kind of a war game, so um, that's that's kind of the origins and, and how it how it developed. But um, in D&D, I think as a spellcaster, if you don't take any damage dealing spells, um, it can be kind of a detriment. <laughs> um, it's it's hard to play D D as a caster with no effective ways of doing damage, in my opinion. Um, obviously, that'll depend on your campaign and uh, how your your uh, DM accommodates for that and everything. Um, it might not be a problem at all at some tables, but um, I, I would say just for the vast majority, I think non damage dealing casters um, can be an issue sometimes with the CR system and everything. Um, CR. Uh, C, C. What's the what's the monster ranking system in uh, in D and D called? <laughs> CR? Challenge rating. Okay, yeah. I said CR, but then all I could think... I couldn't think of what it stood for. I was like... Their critical role level. <laughs> That's not... It didn't sound right for a second. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So these need to go... Oh, on the inside, okay. But yeah, like I said, if, if anybody is interested in uh, TTRPGs, especially if you're wanting to branch out from, from D&D and everything, uh, I, I highly recommend, highly recommend uh, Stars and World Without Number. Oh, I put that a little too close, that's why. Hmm. The one time I played a warwalk, war a warlock, a warlock. In 5e I tried to be utility focused and by level 8 I sort of had to manage, had to completely redirect into damage and combat focus. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of difficult in D&D to do that. It's not impossible. But like the, the and the reason I mentioned that is because in Worlds Without Number, you can be a damage dealing caster. Like it's possible. Um, it's just not necessarily what the system is designed for. Um, and there are actually some interesting mechanics too, where um, the spells are power are, are, are quite powerful. Um, like uh, we literally just had one of the members of our party that like shut down a full boss fight with one spell before it started should <laughs> just entirely ended um and like that's that's the kind of stuff you can do with spell with like good spell timing in in worlds without number um like that's that's the intention of it that's not like a flaw of the game because in in worlds without number stars without number cities without number etc um you're not you're not beefy. <laughs> the intention generally is honestly not to fight, um, or at least to fight smart. Because if you try and go in guns blazing, thinking like we're invincible, like you can in D and D, even like even by like fifth or sixth level, um, you can be fairly reckless and come out maybe not unharmed, but without a TPK. If you go into a reckless fight that looks bad for you in Worlds Without Number, you can all die fast. <laughs> um, my character currently, uh, it, the the level cap in Worlds Without Number is level 10. Um, my character is currently level 6, I believe. Yeah, so we're level 6. I have 15 hit points. <laughs> Uh, without, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a dangerous system. Obviously, like, I'm a caster, so I have less, less hit points than I would if I was, uh, another, another class, but, 
Um, and actually, and and the the reason I mentioned like the the fact that you don't have to you you don't have to do damage as a caster in uh, Worlds Without Number is because my character is um, he's a necromancer, but he's very very like he comes from a forest um, that was essentially like guarded and protected by somebody who was like a physical like manifestation like an aspect of death some people call called called her a like a god of death um other like but not my character doesn't believe that that she was a god necessarily but that she was a protector and this forest is not like it's not like ooh spooky scary bad forest um it's it's a place called the ivory meadows uh and it's essentially like the way he describes it um, every time it's come up is the Ivory Meadows um, is a place that anybody who wanders into it for too long uh, will die. It's not, it, it's just not a place where things can live. Um, but it's not a place that, you know, kills out of malice. The way that he describes is like it, that his forest is like the ocean that um you know we don't think that the ocean hates things that live and breathe air above the surface but it also can accommodate them it's just if you're something that needs air to breathe to, to live you can't live in the ocean um and in that way things that are alive things that um thrive and and live under the sun uh just it is not a place that is conducive for them um but uh essentially like creatures that do die in this forest are, are generally given the chance to offer up not their life but they're able to offer their death to this place uh and exchange get this sort of necromantic unlife that they're able to continue as and they live as this little like village commune and they tend to the dead uh in the forest um they go on these uh, uh once a year sort of uh treks um to uh, uh oh my gosh another ant this is so <laughs> i've been having ant problems lately but uh uh yeah, so they, they go on these like these these like treks once a year to like let anybody know from the nearby villages if like family members were found or things like that in, in their forest. Um, and his because he comes from a place where they are sort of like emissaries of this aspect of death, um, which they see as like a very calm thing, a very like death is a sort of a reward of peace for a life that is well lived um that's sort of the the general take they take but it's also not necessarily like there's a spiritual people but they're not religious necessarily um like he doesn't want to go into like he doesn't want to go out and like spread the word and get more people to come to this forest you know um, but because they are these like emissaries of this aspect, um, he doesn't necessarily, he, he, or not even necessarily, he absolutely does not believe that he should be causing harm or death. Um, he's a very forgiving person to a fault. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, uh. Uh, and, and so because of that, I actually made the, the choice when I started building him uh, that I would not take a single damage dealing spell on him for the entire rest of the game. Um, he has actually found... Um, we found grimoires from a prior necromancer who was extremely powerful, extremely renowned, um, who even now that, that this character has sort of inherited this this power of the previous uh aspect um or the legacy of death from the the previous protector of the forest 
um, uh, you know, he, he, essentially because of all of that, he, he, he has found these like spells from this other previous necromancer, uh, and, and, you know, made the mechanical checks, the dice rolls and everything to read the spells, to study, to understand them. And invested some some amount of time into into understanding the the writings in this this other necromancer's grimoire and every time that he learned a spell uh that was essentially like an offensive spell uh he chose not to add it to his own spell list um i do not have any of uh, any of the the spells from that that book that did damage uh added to his to his spell list <laughs> Um, which has been very interesting because, you know, of course I do sort of have to play that aspect of like, well, he's not doing damage. He's just helping his friends who are doing damage. <laughs> but, um, even then in general, he's, he tries to only do it when there is circumstances that are dire and the effects of not um, sort of violating his own beliefs are going to be worse. I don't know if I phrased that weirdly. Like, if he chooses to violate his beliefs, then the outcome would be better for everyone around him than if he chose to not violate his beliefs. He will violate his beliefs for, like, public safety, greater good, etc., um, but I also, he also, uh, I, ha I, <laughs> uh, I have a log that after every few sessions or so, I will actually like do like a little like travel journal entry, um, that I write like in character as him. Uh, and at the end of all of the times that he has contributed to harm or, um, raised a body without the... Um, the permission of the people uh, of that person or their family and friends, etc. Um, he will actually like list that as like essentially like a sin that he's committed that he wants to atone for. Um, so I've I I personally the player has space have spaced it a few times probably, but in character he is a person who. Uh, would absolutely be keeping track of every single time that he thought he had violated his beliefs and doing his best to atone for them. Um, and it's been interesting because his character growth throughout the game has sort of been... He was never a dogmatic person, but it's been... Um, to turn his theoretical understanding that the world is a place of shades of grey into an understanding of how to operate within those shades of gray because um he's very stressed all of the time <laughs> oh <laughs> he's a, my poor little guy uh, <laughs> as someone who's martial class main and plays with dms who really like playing cool spells i'm so sick of fights being ended by one spell yeah 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 i mean i don't get me wrong i that's not a common thing in in worlds without number uh but it's 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 hard to describe too much without like because within the paradigm of D, &D a fight being ended with one spell is hmm <laughs> maybe maybe a little bit of a letdown i can see if that happens a lot but in, in Worlds Without Number, the way the system is built, um, you have to get l very lucky for that to happen. But then on top of that, um, like I said, we all have, we have, I at least I have 15 hit points. <laughs> at, you know, halfway, over halfway to max level. So in Worlds Without Number, um, when you see big scary boss time, um, like a fight that you, you don't know that you can win. It's sort of like, mm, yeah, if you can end that, please go ahead. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> uh, pretty cool to have a culture that's the other side of the coin to most philosophies. Most people go about believing in a proper way to live, but they spend most of their time thinking there's a proper way to die. Yeah, that's, that's pretty... Um, I wouldn't say entirely antithetical to to their philosophy, and and every person in the Ivory Meadows, like I said, is is free to have their own different beliefs. Some people may have thought the protector of their forest was a god. Fyodor just personally does not. He thinks that she's she was important, and the godhood or or not is irrelevant. Really, it's not a big it's not a big issue for him. Um, he thinks that the power that he inherited from her was um, important, but that doesn't make the person who holds it important. He thinks that he is somebody who is now, um, you know, a protector in the same way that she was, and that she, he holds this, um, this, this piece of her, this piece of the world, that is something that he is obligated to keep safe, that he is responsible for, not that he is empowered by, you know? Uh, Fyodor is a really interesting character. I admire his conviction. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's It's been so fun playing him with, with everybody. Like, it's 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 such a fun party that, that, that we have. <laughs> But yeah, I just, I really enjoy getting to be like very philosophical with him. Mm, is this a game we're talking about or a book? Uh, this is my uh, TTRPG character. <laughs> He's a uh, character in a game that we're playing in a system called Worlds Without Number. Uh, sort of a, you know, uh, d and but not d and I've been looking, I, or not even looking, I've been on this one page for... 74 years talking about my character. <laughs> Let me... Let's, I, s I swear we're gonna get this done tonight. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we need a one... A little one-piece separation between each of these. I don't know why I'm still holding this side. I got it. We know what we're doing now. Mm, bug, hello. It's good to see you. How you doing? Well, that's not the correct piece. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I'm trying to use my fingies. Like a fool. Like a pleb. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, it's it's uh it's it's so funny. My last few uh my last few TTRPG characters have all been very different. <laughs> I had uh uh I had uh, my French vampire Valentin Renard who was just an absolute piece of work, just absolute absolute garbage, just a huge garbage boy. Um committed vampire cannibalism probably committed crimes against humanity committed uh probably committed some war crimes he's not a good guy but he's a very silver-tongued guy so when uh, people in his party came to him and oh, uh, i my problem is i can't hold more than one accent in my head so now that i have a DD character that has a russian accent uh, uh, it's 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 an approximation of Russian accent. <laughs> uh, he uh, now all I can do consistently is a Russian accent. Yanukovic <laughs> Fyodorovsky's voice is more like this. This the only voice I can really do now. <laughs> I cannot do my French voice uh, voice very uh, consistently at this point anymore. <laughs> But, uh, no. Valen uh, Valentin Renard. Nasty boy. Um, he was, uh, a little social climber. Trying to make it to the top of the vampire world. 
and unfortunately he did. <laughs> uh, I, we've actually sort of talked a little bit about, um, uh, I'm not sure what, I think we're, I don't know if or when the plan is for this, but we've actually talked about a, the idea or possibility of a campaign with, uh, me essentially handing that character over to the DM uh, and him being the big bad <laughs> or one of the one of the big bads along with his sugar daddy uh, for our next campaign because they're just the absolute worst couple just the, just terrible people doing terrible things together all of the time He was, uh, uh, for those of you who are familiar with, uh, Vampire the Masquerade, he was, of course, a, uh, oh no, wait, what was, what's the name of the, uh, the clan? Uh, da -da -da -da. they're like the ones that, like, fancy themselves, like, the kings of the world, you know, the world leaders in training and all that, not even in training, but the, uh, the Ventru. That's what it was. Yeah, the Ventru clan. Um, oh, that's the wrong piece again. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he was a... He was a blue-blooded venture through and through. <laughs> uh, his story was was fun too, though. I think he uh, um, essentially became sort of the uh, the the pet of uh, of this uh, powerful vampire from England named uh, Frederick, um, and uh, over time. Uh, for this this man sort of this this vampire who was sort of just you know keeping keeping a pet blood bag um started to realize uh the true colors of my little nasty boy and liked them <laughs> because he's nasty too um and eventually turned him into a vampire and they made their relationship everybody else's problem uh uh, and eventually, uh, 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 they, they met in France, like, while, while Frederick was sort of on, on, on his little va vacations, uh, doing, doing his networking and such. And so eventually, uh, uh, Valentine got taken back to England with them and turned into a full-fledged vampire. Uh, although they were actually escaping France because France had been taken over by the um, uh, Anarchs, I think. Uh, the, the There's the, the main sort of like clans that you play as in VTM most of the time are the Camarilla. That's sort of like vampire society. Um the Sabbat, that's what it was. So the Sabbat had essentially like taken over um, Paris and so they were getting out of Dodge. Uh, and essentially after the campaign, um, me and we had sort of like talked about this and it, we decided that Frederick and Valentine eventually like took uh, a, a, an art, like essentially like a, an army from uh like the the Camarilla in England reconquered France uh, or Paris at least and uh, took it back from the Sabbat uh, and are now the the prince and his harpy of of Paris uh, and they uh, they actually one of the other members of the party um, they're uh, they're the the blood the blood magic vampire I can't remember the name of the clan but he went with them uh, and uh, is a sort of their little, their witch, their caster. 
Mm -hmm. I wish more of my friends were into TTRPGs because I want to play but know nothing. Oh, hopefully you can find a group one day. It's it's uh, it's a very fun experience. I I absolutely love it. It's something that I think I will be doing for decades and decades to come. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, funny you were talking about TTRPGs. I'm currently building one right now. Oh, that's so fun. Good luck with the Blue Spirit. Hello. Uh, building TTRPG characters right now. Oh, what are you what are you building, Bug? You might have said actually. Let me keep reading. <laughs> uh, evil character is my fave. I have an outlaw werewolf who is romancing another player's cult leader gunslinger. They hate each other but are trying hard not to kiss. <laughs> I love that dynamic. I love that for them. Ace, hello. Been forever since I've seen the streams. Uh, it's been forever since I've done the stream, so. <laughs> okay, now these little funky pieces go in between. Yeah, so that was that was a couple campaigns back, and then there was um, oh my gosh, I can actually show you guys all of my dice because I have a new a new dice carrier that I got for Christmas. Um, I tend to just use the the digital dice for uh, or like uh, not digital dice, but like the the bots because we we play over Discord. So I mostly just use Discord to roll my dice, um, just for the convenience, but, uh, the, the campaign after Vampire the Masquerade that we played was a, a game called, uh, Sins. Sins <laughs> is a game. It's one of those things where there are a lot of really cool concepts in it. There's a lot of fun ideas. There's a lot of uh, um, interesting mechanics, but it's just such a, the, the, it's so complexly written. It's so hard to understand. Like I, um, I hope this, this, I hope this doesn't sound arrogant to say or anything, but I'm, 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 a little bit of sort of a, a um, like, like, basically, if my DM needs to remember like a rule um, about something, uh, generally, I'm sort of the, the second person to remember. <laughs> uh, just because I, I, it's the TTRPG special interest. <laughs> it's the neurodivergence, that's all. <laughs> It's not that I'm, like, good at understanding them or anything. I will literally just sit with one of these books for six hours at a time and, like, flip back and forth between pages, forcing myself to understand stuff. And there is truly no other option with <laughs> the TTRPG sins. Um, it's complex in a way that I don't think is good necessarily. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, if you're playing with friends and stuff, it's still absolutely fun. It's still absolutely a good time, but it's much more complexly written than it needs to be, in my opinion. Um, I feel like I sort of have a headache every time I have to find something in there. <laughs> um, but I mean, regardless though, the I still had a lot of fun with the character I made for that system. Um, it's, uh, uh, Onyx, I can't remember his last name, um, but, uh, he lived in a, essentially, uh, Sins is sort of another dying world type system that, that has to do with a lot of, like, um, Like the, the the there was essentially like this like black rain that like infected the earth and now and then all of these like giant mythological like creatures called reapers started appearing and then they disappeared and then people started coming back to life but they were like wrong um, and they like 
it's sort of there's some like zombie stuff, some fantasy stuff. It's kind of a a, a mishmash um, in an interesting way. Um, there's these like crystals that hold like esoteric knowledge. Um, and wait, what the heck? Oh, okay, I see, I see. Um, and so the the uh, the character that I played, he was from a town called White Claw. <laughs> um, I always that's like one of my favorite things uh, with TTRPGs is like my DM is very gracious in allowing me to kind of uh, world build uh, with him. Um, uh, so a lot of the time, like I will actually generally like the um, I'll kind of come up with a a place and stuff that that feels to me like it might fit in the world that we're in and then I'll bring it to my DM and I'll be like okay this is the character I have this is sort of the setting that I have for them um any adjustments that we need to make you know we make um why is this not <laughs> clicking here we go uh it's not even uh yeah, so like the Ivory Meadows was like something that, that I had come up with before I, I came to him and then we kind of figured out a way for it to to fit in the world. Um, which I'm very glad that he's he's gracious enough to, to allow me to impose some world building upon him. Um, because it's a very... Uh... Let me turn this off. Okay, I was trying to make sure if it needed to be every other one or not. But yeah, so um, the town is called White Claw <laughs> because uh, he came, because it, it, like I said, this is like a dying world sort of setting that's like hundreds of years in the future. Um, and oh, uh, because of that, uh, essentially there was a, like, this old, uh, uh, um, you know, billboard, uh, near the town, uh, that said, that was like an old, old, old advertisement for White Claw, uh, and so not knowing what that was or anything when the town was settled, um, and it's this very, like, old style, like, Midwestern type of town, um, uh, they, that's what they called it, because that's what they thought it was called. <laughs> so it's just sort of a funny little thing. Uh, what's that you building? I'm building a bonsai tree. It's almost done. So we've got the tree, the tree part here. I can't tilt it too much to show you, but, because there's all these little loose pieces in here. Uh, but I will, will uh, well, I think this is almost done, so we'll be back to uh, the tree part of it, putting the leaves and stuff on soon. I don't think... I, I posted, uh, and I think I talked a little bit about the, the Japanese game um, that I, I want to play uh, on stream. Uh, or the Japanese like language like learning game that just came out, Shashingo. Um... I don't think we're going to get to that tonight, just as a heads up, but something for later. I think we'll, we'll probably end once we finish this up, but we've still got a little ways for that. I'm building a tired Scottish father figure of a disaster cleric and a reborn. Ah, reborn. I was, I love that. I've got my own reborn druid. I'm, I'm a sucker for reborn. It's a circus barbarian. <laughs> That's so fun. Building options for them to choose from. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Have me on their podcast. That's so cool. I hope you have fun. And if you end up, uh, you know, whenever you end up on there, bug it if you don't mind. I would love to hear about it. I would love a, a link to the, uh, the podcast, possibly. Would love to listen. I'm a big uh, D20 a D20 fan, and uh, I've listened to some other uh, uh, D&D podcasts here and there. 
Um, I tuned into an episode of Critical Role randomly the other night just to see what was going on, and man, they sure got a lot going on. <laughs> the moon is fake. The the there's there's just so much. There's it's like I can't believe Genshin did that actually. <laughs> a long time ago, just dropped the lore of Scaramouche being like, "Hey, the sky is fake," and then they never touched it again. <laughs> But there's just, there's so much happening in Critical Role. <laughs> I was like, I can't keep up with this. I really loved season three of Critical, or not season three, season two of Critical Role. Um, season two just didn't, or, oh gosh, I can't get my numbers right. That's how you know I'm fruity. Uh, I just, I, I just couldn't seem to get into season three for some reason. Which was kind of sad because I really love, I, I love Laudna. Um, uh, Fern seemed very fun, but I don't know, there was just nothing that, that attached me to it the way that some of the stuff did in, in Campaign 2. Hmm. The group TTRPG Glossary? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any, anytime, Danny. <laughs> anytime. <laughs> we've got to we've got to we've got to weaponize the neurodivergence for something <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. there was a one shot uh, I did a while back your character just reminded me of this bug where uh, I played a, uh, a fairy barbarian I played a wild magic fairy barbarian and I got to do a little Scottish accent for him. It was very fun. He's just a feisty little guy. Um, but yeah, my character, uh, uh, Onyx. Uh, God, he was truly a character that was like the epitome of the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, like, he was, he, he was a disaster boy. It was like... He was always trying to do the right thing, but he was always going about it the wrong way. <laughs> um, he had a little bit of a dog-eat-dog -dog world kind of mi mindset. Um, he was just this poor guy. Uh, he got, like, his, his whole story is, is kind of... I'm not going to get into it because his story is a little more traumatic than some of my other characters. It's a little more, uh, a little more stuff that requires trigger warnings in his story, so I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> All you need to know is he's a disaster boy. He had a southern accent. Mm -hmm. Moon's haunted? Yeah. <laughs> Of course, I won't be sharing it on my channel or anything. This will be my IRL stuff, but I'll send you the link. Oh, I appreciate that. I didn't realize it was going to be, like, associated with that. So, you know, if you're not comfortable with that, please don't feel the need. But if you ever are, I appreciate the, the chance to listen. C2 just had such strong characters like Jester and Molly right out the gate. It was so good. It was hard not to love them. I do have... I have a controversial opinion. I started out liking Molly Mock. There will be, I know it's been out for a while, but just in case, I know some people like plan to get to Critical Role eventually and just haven't yet. So there will be some spoilers, <laughs> just as a heads up. So my, if, if, if that's a problem, you might want to tune out for just a couple minutes. But um, so yeah, starting now, uh, Critical, I, I was not a big fan of Molly Mock. I liked him in the beginning and Molly Mock was actually why I started watching. Um, but I, I never grew to really like his character as much as I thought I would. And I think that, um, and of course this is just my, this is just me talking to talk. This is no, <laughs> if you, if you're a diehard Molly Mock fan, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you found a character that resonates with you. But just for me, he didn't resonate really at all. And I think that, um... I think that uh, um, the character, well, oh gosh, uh, the Caduceus Clay uh, uh, was so much more conducive to the party. I think he was such a better addition than Molly Mock, to be honest. 
Not in the sense that he was a better character. I liked him more, but I don't mean it that way. I mean that he, like Caduceus Clay was what the party needed. And we didn't know that until Caduceus Clay was in the party. <laughs> um, oh gosh, Caduceus Clay. I love him so much. He's actually, he he was kind of part of my my inspiration for uh, Yanukovych Fyodorovsky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just potentially my favorite character in, in Critical Role, which is so funny because all of, uh, all of, um, um, I'm so bad with names. I, I can't remember his player's name at the moment. Um, all of his other characters, you know, some people, like people just generally have like types of characters that they tend to go for, or just like patterns, I think, that sort of emerge in their characters. Um, things that obviously are preferential for them, things that they think are fun to play. And I just don't tend to gravitate towards... Um, yeah, Taliesin, that's it. I just don't tend to gravitate much to, gra to, to Taliesin's characters. Um, uh, uh, Percy, Ashton, Molly Maw, just n none of them really did it for me so it's so funny that caduceus clay is like perfect i'm like that's a perfect boy <laughs> um and that's nothing against you know talison or anything it's uh, i you know uh it's just you know like i said he has certain types of characters he likes to play and resonate towards and they're just not for me that's all Caduceus Clay, however, is very much for me. <laughs> Could not be more for me if he tried. But I think, uh, and I, I, I just want to be clear, I don't want this to come across as like any sort of, um, but then what is this wrong? I don't want this to come across as any sort of, um, Uh, sort of a weird one to remove. Um, sort of criticism of 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 the the the, the current campaign or anything like that. Why can't I get this out? <laughs> there we go. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't mean it as like any sort of criticism towards like critical role or the players or anything like that at all. Um, but I think the, for, for me, this is just personal preference, but with campaign three, it sort of felt like there was no character that really grounded everybody. Um, I know there's Orem, but I guess like, I, I just never found anything in Orem that really drew me in. Um... So I just, it, it was just sort of like, um, like Caduceus Clay was a, a, like an oddball sort of character. He was, he was a little bit of a weird guy, but he was very grounded in other ways. Um, and I just feel like, uh, season three or campaign three just sort of didn't have anybody like that that I connected with. Like I said, there were a lot of characters I liked. I think it's just the the dynamic, something about it. And then I think it's also just kind of like, you know, and this makes sense. It's the third campaign of a thing where campaigns have gone on for 120 episodes. It's sort of tying the other two campaigns together and it just sort of, but there are just moments where it just sort of feels like there's too much going on, too many loose ends uh, with, with season, with, with campaign three. For me again just personal personal opinion but again nothing nothing wrong with it and i'm i i'm glad that if you're enjoying it that you are and i might give it another chance uh at, at some point it's just right now just right now didn't didn't grab me was all There's also a little lot of inter-campaign connections that make it feel a little overwhelming at times. Yeah. 
uh, uh, special like I didn't I didn't watch uh, campaign one. I I still plan to one day, but I've I've watched uh, some of the animated series. I've watched a little campaign one, just not. I haven't gotten neck deep in it. You know, it's one of those things where I watch like the first four or five episodes, and I think it's just like I think with campaign one. <laughs> It's just a little bit harder at, at the very beginning, just because, you know, that's when they were first getting their start. They're figuring everything out. And, uh... <laughs> not only that, but they also, you know, had, uh... Had a little bit of a problem player, which I actually didn't even know about until I started Campaign 1, and I was like... Who's this other guy? <laughs> Yeah, I really, I, I do like the the connections, but it does they they do feel there were some parts of it in the beginning. I don't know. Things in campaign two felt like they unfolded very naturally to me, where player where the players were kind of like chasing the leads that interested them and. Um, you know, there were sprinkles of, like, other plot points and stuff that could be chased, but it felt like the players were driving it a little bit more, and I think, I actually, I, I've literally just put my finger on this right now, <laughs> but I think campaign three, for the, for, for what I watched of, like, the first, like, 15 episodes, I think, um, it felt sort of like the it didn't feel like the players were as in control of where they were going or what was happening. Um, which they very well might be. They, they might have been okay with this. might have been intentional. This might have been something they talked about. I don't know what goes on behind the closed door. The critical role. <laughs> but um, for me, it just made it, I think, a little bit less... Less, um, less of an easy watch. So I need so this. Hmm. Oh my gosh, though, I, I, I was really glad I tuned into the latest episode of, 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 um, uh, campaign three, though, um, uh, again, let's dip just in case if people have tuned back in. Campaign three spoilers also coming in. <laughs> um, but we like in uh, in the campaign so far. Uh, I think they've seen most of their campaign two characters. Uh, been lurking. Need to go to bed. Wake up for an exam tomorrow. Thank you for relaxing me to come back to after work of course good luck with the uh, good luck with your exam i hope it goes well i'm sure you're gonna crush it and thank you for for hanging out um but yeah so with uh um the uh latest episode of of critical role uh like i said they had, I, I think they've gotten a, at least glimpses of most of their campaign two characters as like cameos or or um, whatever in the current campaign, but, um, the, uh, 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 Jester had not, had not shown up yet, and she showed up in the most Jester way possible the other day, um, by, uh, she, she used sending, uh, to, talk to one of the members of the current party uh, kind of delivering a, a message uh i think between like her and caleb or something oh my gosh it's oh oh i i think i might need to watch campaign two again i know i should watch campaign one <laughs> but i'm just like just 
this is the characters in campaign two spark joy. <laughs> Jester's oh. But I think that's 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 a good comparison, I think, for sort of why I've had a harder time with campaign three, I think. Because it sort of feels like we have a party it, it sort of feels like a party of jesters to some degree. Um which is a, a, a lot <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. I used to be able to do a really good jester impression. Oh, <laughs> I feel like doing a jester impression would be so fun. <laughs> There's our stand. That's so crazy. This like doesn't look like it's made of Legos. Like if you just told me this was like a regular plant stand, I'd be like, all right, yeah, that looks nice. It's fancy. But it's Legos. That's I don't know why that's I'm like amazed by that though. <laughs> so now we get to put this here. And we get to start putting our, our petals on. So it's gonna be starting here. Okay. So I have one second. Vegetable break. just crazy how I just forget I'm hungry. <laughs> and then I remember, and it's not like I'm like a little hungry. I'm like famished. <laughs> not right now, I mean, but just when that happens, it's like, how do you forget? <laughs> how do you forget you're hungry? That's not, that's not something you remember. You just feel it. <laughs> Yeah, veggie refuel break. Yeah, I've been trying to eat more veggies. Because I could feel the scurvy coming on. <laughs> more uh, more fruits and veggies. I'm hoping uh, one of these days, if I wake up early enough and I've got... Oh my gosh, drop this. couldn't find it. I was, thought I was gonna have to uh, hunt for that later so my cat couldn't eat it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Not the scurvy. <laughs> scissors so far out of reach and I keep eating them. I don't know why I keep doing that. I'll learn by the time I finish this. <laughs> mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. Go to bed, got work at 11 a.m. Oh, please enjoy your rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some, get some good sleep. I hope you have a good day at work. <laughs> Thank you for uh, stopping by. 
Curious how long this is gonna take. This feels like it looks like the, the <laughs> looks like the tedious part. I think that four years of having a 6 a.m. shift, I'd be used to it. Nope. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> Got some green. I actually, I really should have waited to put these pebbles in last because I realize I'm gonna have to kind of probably take them out anyway to like show you guys from the side. Maybe I could just hold my hand like this when I tilt it over to show you guys. Hmm. I know. I I, I used to <laughs> the one of the places I used to work. Every once in a while, I would get like some. Uh, 8 a.m. shifts and everything. I know it's not. I know it's not 6 a.m. But for me, it might as well be. It's not. There's no difference in how tired I am at 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. Trying to understand what the instructions are trying to tell me right now. It's the time I go to bed. I can never use. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just too much. Too early. That's just like one of those things, like in our in society, where I'm like, we like, especially for for like like a. Uh, like high school and like middle school out starting times and everything with having to get up at times like that. I'm like, we literally have scientific data proof that says this is a bad idea. Why are we still doing it? <laughs> Friend has the opening. Ooh, the opening shift at Starbucks sounds rough. School is time so people can get to work while delivering kids. Yeah, but I think there are ways that there are alternatives that would be better than uh, forcing every teenager in the U.S. to absolutely destroy their natural circadian rhythms. <laughs> like, 
teenagers should not be waking up that early. Like, it is like there is like, uh, like studies that have been done about it. It's bad and not conducive to learning. <laughs> like, just naturally have like generally later, like a, a later circadian rhythm uh, at that at that age. Uh, and forcing forcing people to work against their own natural like body rhythms that is coded into them is not not great <laughs> uh, school starts in actual time here like the sun is up yeah that's well like uh in california it's better than than some other places because like i'm just talking about the u.s that's that's all i know about <laughs> um but in california um we recently we had a law that went into effect a few years back where um the uh, uh you actually can't like schools have like a s start time they cannot go earlier than it's still maybe not as late as i think it should be but considering like our current work culture and stuff i you know i understand there has to be some bounds but um i think i need to make three of these i think is what i'm understanding um and that's that that was something that I was really uh glad to see when 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 they put that into effect. But yeah, cuz I remember when I was going to high school um I remember going to I remember getting to school and the sun was not even up yet. <laughs> and that's not great. <laughs> Wish American school system actually took the idea of foreign school schedules because don't they have greater learning retention and grade average? Yeah, I think it's it's difficult to compare um, because I think I'll like, don't get me wrong, the American school system is generally not not great and not at the fault of teachers or anything, but the the core structure and like, you know, standardized testing and stuff, not great. There's a lot of stuff that's not great. But I also think there is a tendency to be more hypercritical of it in comparison to foreign school systems. Um, uh, you know, every 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 country is going to have their quirks and everything with their their education systems. But like, um, with the the American education system, um, the thing is, if you compare the like passing grades of like American school systems versus school systems in a lot of other countries, the passing grade, like the threshold is different. So other places may have harder material, but they don't require their students to master it as much. So like, and this isn't true of everywhere. This is just, I know of some places where like a passing grade is like a 50 or a 60 percent um whereas generally in the u.s you know 75 percent is like minimum um so it's th there are some differences i think that make it a little hard to compare sometimes because you know if you if you're saying well these many students pass a geometry class in denmark versus this many in america and you know, you say, oh, well, there's less passing, passing it in America, so they must be doing worse. But our grade thresholds, I don't know what Denmark's <laughs> grade system is like, so that's just the first country that came out of my mouth. <laughs> mm. But yeah, so it's just, uh, I don't know, I'm not, uh, obviously, I'm not saying I, I know what the answer is. <laughs> I was just saying I, I it's, uh, it's a complicated topic, I think. <laughs> Make like a tree and like a brick. Go to bed. Good night, y'all. Oh, good night, next. I hope you uh, hope you rest well. Don't even get me started on Common Core. Yeah, I don't. 
know that I know enough about Common Core to really be too critical of it. Um, I know some of like the common criticisms and stuff, but I just haven't. I haven't been in high school for a while. <laughs> so uh, that all happened after me, so I don't know. Like I was <laughs> I was uh I was in high school before they even really started. You remember like when they started adding like all like the smart boards and stuff to the classroom? That was after me, so <laughs> I've it's it's been a while. But yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know, I have a lot of thoughts on like how like the education system works and it's like one of those things where it, like I truly just, I wish that we would look at things that, w I, like I wish a lot of places would do this, look at what works in other countries and adapt and try to figure out how you can make it work in, in, in your own place. But uh, that doesn't seem to be <laughs> the common sentiment, at least not here in, in the US. It's not a, uh, doesn't seem to be how we're operating, apparently. <laughs> I'm doing at 5 a.m. Try to get a chance. Oh, oof. Yeah, that's early. Lyra, hello. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? Are you, are you snoozing? <laughs> the way I'll. <laughs> Ricky, when I get you. I think the, the the thing I have like some of the strongest thoughts on though are and I know we discussed this a little bit yesterday is just our foreign language education is so bad. It's just truly like if you tried to design classes that taught languages in the least effective possible way, you would probably end up right back where at <laughs> what we do right now. <laughs> and I mean it's not just us. I had language learning classes and uh Japan, both for Japanese and Spanish, that were not structured in a very conducive way. <laughs> yeah, the la not the language classes. It's it's so gestures vaguely, <laughs> and I mean once again, you know, it's it's absolutely not like the fault of, of teachers or anything like that. It's just. That's the way the system is, is set up right now, and that's the way a lot of the requirements are, especially with all the, the standardized testing and stuff. And, you know, I, I feel for, like, a lot of the students that have to deal with it still, you know? And I think now, um, I think when I was a student, I don't know that there was, like, as common a sentiment of people sort of knowing that what we do in the U.S. isn't doesn't work very well with our, our language classes um like or, or honestly the the structure of, of quite a few of our classes um there are types of classes but um i i feel like now there's more awareness of of that kind of thing maybe i'm wrong i'm not i'm not i'm not too in touch with the youth <laughs> but i think it feels to me like with, uh, you know, the social media and everything, um, that, that students probably have a little better idea of some of the flaws of the system they're operating in now. And I think that must make it more frustrating. You know, it's it's one thing to be in high school like when I was and, and be like, be like, you know, the normal high school thing of like, I don't need this. <laughs> I don't want to learn this. This isn't helpful to me. Um, versus like 
having a understanding that the wider um, impact or the wider um, system of education in, in that, that you're operating in is flawed. I think that's a different thing to, to have to grapple with while you're in that system. Uh, quiero aprender español, entonces necesito practicar, pero... <laughs> I'm embarrassed if I speak wrong. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I've taken about four years of Spanish, but, uh, I also, I also, uh, do not, <laughs> do not understand, I don't, I uh, don't know it. <laughs> I know bits and pieces, like, I can under, obviously, even, like, you, you got the context there, but, like, I understand what you said there, and I could pick up little bits and pieces, but nothing actually useful. I want to go back to it again one day. <laughs> it's definitely like Japanese and Spanish are the two languages like on my on my docket right now. system <laughs> in a in a sentence yuki <laughs> uh i only got a trimester in middle school and whatever du duolingo taught me and that's it i mean that's i mean that's still that's still pretty good for what you were able to for <laughs> what you're able to write that's still pretty good i think i wouldn't even i wouldn't even be able to do that i truly uh never <laughs> I never was able to distinguish there from estar, <laughs> ever. <laughs> and I also can't roll my tongue, so I sound like the most Caucasian person in existence when I try to speak Spanish. If there's a if there's a trilled R in there, I'm out. I'm gone. <laughs> my mouth doesn't do that. <laughs> I took French instead, and it was a mistake. <laughs> Every time I hear about the French counting system, I'm afraid and confused. <laughs> now it doesn't do what now? It doesn't do the trilled R's, the 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 doble R's in, uh, in Spanish. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> and I know it's like I know the the the, the thing is not. You're not supposed to try to make the sound. It's like blowing air uh and and relaxing your tongue i've never relaxed once in my life that's the problem <laughs> um well i've relaxed i've just always been <laughs> there's always some tension there there's something <laughs> uh, you need six of these I think I'm just gonna do the green for tonight. Maybe off off stream I'll add the pink. Cause it's gonna cause all of this, this is I thought it was just gonna be like sort of slapping the, the, the leaves on a little bit uh more. Um I guess I should have figured it would have been like as as um detailed as this, but uh I was just hoping, if it wasn't, that I would be able to just kind of, you know, take off a few green pieces, sprinkle a few pink pieces on. But I don't know if that's how it's going to work, so I might have to do that off screen, off stream, and then I'll show you guys next time. <laughs> you know what that, that mouth do? Eat french fries. I would love some french fries right now. Don't worry, I'll venue my ability to roll your eyes. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. I, will, I really wish I could though too, also for Japanese, because like I know there's there's no sound in Japanese that requires you to, to chill your R's, but that sort of like 
like like a Yankee way of speaking uh with like the the, the trilled R's like the you know like the 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 punky anime boy characters that like roll their R's when they're trying to sound tough and stuff I think that sounds so nice I love the way it sounds when people trill their R's when they're speaking Japanese um but I can't do it <laughs> Oh my god, learning how to roll R's after getting my tongue pierced is a struggle. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't couldn't roll them before I got my tongue pierced. I couldn't roll them after I got my tongue pierced. <laughs> you know what else I couldn't do after I got my tongue pierced? Eat anything but soup for four days straight. <laughs> the liquid only diet. It's so funny, every time somebody asks me like Oh, to getting your tongue piercing hurt or, or, you know, how much did it hurt or whatever. I'm like, oh, really? The actual piercing didn't hurt. It was just the aftercare process that sucked. <laughs> because when I got my tongue pierced, it really didn't hurt very much. It was fine. But then afterwards, like, it was just so sore. <laughs> I was like, I... E even stuff with, like, anything in it, like vegetables or anything. I was like, nope, this needs to be purely broth. <laughs> Oh, Arcane, hello! Thank you for the raid. Thank you for stopping in. I hope you had a fun stream. What were you doing tonight? <laughs> we've just been building a, uh, we're building a bonsai, a Lego bonsai tree right now. It's a little hard to see, but I've got this here. I've got a little, uh, little, uh, platform for it. <laughs> Playing Red Dead. Ooh, I hope you had fun! But thank you for the raid. For uh, those of you who are new here, hello, my name is Salem. I am a, uh, a witch VTuber. Uh, I do uh, ASMR over on YouTube. Um, mostly do softer streams over here. Uh, but also League of Legends. <laughs> Two very different ends of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Online game is still full of hackers. Ah, gotcha. I've never played Red Dead. I don't know much about it. I've I've watched I've watched people play. But I've never played myself. That's honestly kinda how I am with most games. That's kinda how I'm okay with it, to be honest. <laughs> I think a lot of the times I kind of prefer watching people play. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just not very good about actually playing them myself. <laughs> I think I get I get frustrated when I try to play games like uh or complicated games like myself a lot of times. But if I'm watching somebody else play, then I'm not frustrated. Then I'm having fun. I don't know if they're frustrated, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> hmm. Do 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 do. Oh, you, uh, wait, you have your tongue pierced? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I used to have quite a few piercings, actually. Um, I don't anymore. I've taken quite a few out. And it's not actually even because I didn't want them it's anymore. It's because they got tedious um, with changing the jewelry and uh, having jewelry fall out and stuff a lot. And I was just like, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm tired of this. So I kept all of my stuff where the jewelry, like, I, I I don't have issues with it, like, falling out or coming out often. But I think at my, at my peak, peak piercing out, uh, days I had. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 18? I think 18. But... Not so much anymore. <laughs> I love watching people play, but get disinterested too fast and I play myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me for real, Jacksepticeye and Markiplier love my let's play pookies. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there's, there's, uh, in, in terms of content creators and stuff, I, uh, 
Um, I really like watch. I, I I think the only content creator that I really watch like for their like games and stuff, also for like you know their their personality and, and all that, but uh, is a uh, Halion, which is the uh, person who I kind of learned basically everything I know about Hades from watching uh, his videos. <laughs> And then he also, he, uh, cause I'm more into like indie games. I'm not really into like big like story games or, uh, like, uh, like, uh, um, not necessarily story games, but how do I put, how do I, how do I explain this? Like, uh, uh, like games like The, the Last of Us or, or mission based games and stuff. I don't know. There's there's something about them. I have a hard I have a hard time with. There's truly just something about. I, um, I, I think I'm just I'm like I'm I'm a little bit of a gamer, but I'm not much of a gamer. <laughs> the I mostly prefer like indie games, roguelikes, those kinds of things. And uh, that's why that's, I tend to watch a lot of Halion because he does a lot of like roguelike demos and stuff about early access games and everything. So I find out a lot about a lot of uh, a lot of little silent kind of more underground games than I wouldn't have found out about otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, cinematic movie type games. Yes, exactly, exactly that. Um. Which is funny because it, uh, I hate like a uh, um, something like maybe like Kingdom Hearts or Dot Hack um, are the extremely old examples, but I think maybe good examples of um, the kinds of like story games that I can tolerate, where there's a story, there's something you're supposed to go and do, but um, there's also like free combat you can do and stuff. I, I combat is generally a pretty important thing to me in games. Um, and so like, and so that's, that's why a lot of the times like those like cinematic like movie type games, uh, a lot of the times are the combat isn't very tactical necessarily or intensive. It's not like the focus of the game. Um, and I and I, I uh, just can't 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 always stick to it quite as well. Whereas in something like Kingdom Hearts or Dot Hack or anything, there's absolutely a story. Like I said, there's things you're supposed to go and do, but you're not. Um, but the 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 fighting, the 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 action, the combat, and everything is still a, a pretty a pretty um, key feature of the game, you know. Uh, night night. Gonna go to Eep. Oh, rat! Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you uh, hope you get some good Eep. Uh, mentioned before that open world isn't really your vibe either. Yeah, it's just it's the uh, the open endedness. Too many options, and it's it's sort of like it's it's like a uh, with Minecraft. Um, is is a good example where it's like. The thing that most people I think really love about Minecraft and what they the, the people sort of tout is like you can make anything, you can build anything you want, you can go anywhere you want, do anything you want. Obviously within bounds of the game, but that's not what I want out of a game. <laughs> that's sort of the crux of the problem. Is I want a game to tell me where I'm supposed to go <laughs> because I like I, I think maybe not everybody, but I think a lot of the times we play. We play games or enjoy media or entertainment that sort of balances something in our life. And for me, I have trouble with gray areas. More ants. Oh my gosh. Two this time. I swear I don't leave like a bunch of food in my room or anything like that. I just I have a I just have my window open and it's cold outside. <laughs> oh, gross. Oh. But yeah, so it's like, I, for me, I think what that is, is like, um, when I'm like, for, for me, I think like, 
I feel I struggle enough with like gray areas and not knowing what I'm supposed to be doing in my daily life. So it's like when I go to a game, I don't want to have to think about what needs to be done or what I want to do. I want to know what the game wants me to do and figure out how I want to do it. I guess if that is if that's maybe if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Mash hate to be the boss, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just gonna say hi. <laughs> You're okay, it's alright. You could you could you, one bug allowed. <laughs> one bug allowed. <laughs> I just don't like I just don't like coming on the stream and just having like ants everywhere. It's kind of kind of kind of gross. <laughs> kind of gross looking. Special bug rights. <laughs> if you're cold, they're cold. Let the ants sit, <laughs> sit around the candle and make s'mores. <laughs> one of those things where like you, like even with minecraft like i said when i like absolutely like watching somebody else play great totally fine perfect fun enjoyable nice to see what they're making i just don't want to have to think about what i would want to make <laughs> those those sandbox games are just kind of more stressful for me than anything on these. Skip the step. Yeah, I'm, I, I probably won't be able to like redo this on my own, so <laughs> I'll have to kind of take some, I'll probably end up taking like all of the, uh, or at least some of the, the, the leaves on, on, on the tier apart. And I'll have to figure out like what parts match between like the pink and the green, and then I can kind of assort them how I would like that way. <laughs> Still recommend you try one of the older Zelda games because Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom were the first in the series being more open world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played Majora's Mask a little bit when I was younger, but I was also like was quite young, and Majora's Mask was not an easy game. So I think I played for a few days and then I gave up because I kept getting stuck in the same spot. <laughs> uh, about that time, I'm gonna head out and get some sleep. Good night, thank you for hanging around, Bug. It's fun having you. Bug, bug privileges. When it, hey, whenever you stop by, you got bug privileges. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might give uh, the Zelda games a try again one day. Um, I think, uh, uh, possibly the, uh, the one where he turns into a wolf, the furry Zelda game. <laughs> I might give that one a try one day. And then there's just, like, some kind of older, like, retro games and stuff that I want to try, too. Um, 
I, I hate that I just use the word retro to refer to a game from my childhood. <laughs> but like Shadow of the Colossus um, was one that I remember like I uh, I played a demo. There was I remember there was like a demo CD I got as a kid that had like four or five different games on it. Um, and Shadow of the Colossus was one of one of the demos on it. And it was like, and I remember like, even when I was young, I was like so struck by how beautiful that game was. Um, but I just never, never got to it. I played that demo maybe a, a couple of times, played a little bit of it. I never finished it. The amount of games that I've actually completed, I can probably count on like one hand might need a couple extra fingers. It's kind of nice when you get into like a, a groove with some of these things and you realize like okay these are the pieces I need and you just you just get going. Shadow of the Colossus always feels like we're playing a poacher killing innocent giants. Yeah I've, I've kind of heard that about Shadow of the Colossus. That's kind of one of the only things that has, has kept me away from it is I don't know there's something about I enjoy melancholy media but I tend to enjoy melancholy more in books like whereas in games and movies it just makes me sad <laughs> but it's also just like it seems like such a beautiful story and beautiful game that i i, I want i i want to try it but I, I just don't know if i will yet Oh, okay. I think I see. I see. I see. I see. I will say the, in the instructions on this part are not the clearest. The, uh, the leaves, like how many you need to make and where they go and everything is not as, not quite as clear as everything else was. It's like one of those games where I think like with, with Shadow of the Colossus, I think like, do you ever have like media that you watch or read or anything? And it's like so far out of the paradigm of like a good game or a bad game or book or what, whatever it might be that you're, you're that, that, that you, you know, you might be talking about. Um, that it's not that's not even like a correct scale to measure it on it's like the the um the best way i can describe like some of the the media that uh, of that type is like it doesn't feel good or bad um it feels important there's some some things that i've some media i've i've experienced where and i can't think of anything off the top of my head um, but there's some that I've, I've, I've watched where I'm like, this doesn't, I don't know whether I liked this or not, but I know that I was impacted by this. Colossus is the epitome of show, don't tell. There's not a whole lot of spoken dialogue, but there's enough to paint a picture. Gotcha. I think Undertale did this to me since that game, my standard for actually having a motivation to kill enemies has grown a lot. <laughs> Out there, my top 10 games. Yeah, I've, I've heard that from a lot of people about Shadow of the Colossus. Like, 
it's kind of like it feels like a little bit of a sleeper agent anytime i mention it <laughs> to somebody that's played it they're always like let me sit you down <laughs> let's have a talk let's have a chat <laughs> the soundtrack yeah I'm, sh I'm sure i can imagine Actually, I'm kind of wondering, we might be able to put these pink pieces on tonight. We might, we might. Me saying this wasn't going to be a four hour stream. Me looking at the timer, three and a half hours. <laughs> Like I said, I can turn I can turn a one to two hour activity into a five, six hour activity, no problem. It's like a reverse superpower. <laughs> that reminds me, I think I'm I'm thinking of getting a Steam Deck and making a list of games and Shadow of the Colossus is definitely on that list. Thank you, of course. I hope you enjoy it when you're able to uh, to give it a try. Oh, it's all right, Nick. Don't worry about it. I appreciate it, but I'll probably either uh, with something like that. If, if uh, I'd rather experience it with the game, I think. <laughs> okay, so now these go into like these other slots. I think. Night, hello, hello, you cozy and glad. <laughs> it's just a cozy, relaxing kind of night over here. Putting some Legos together. Mostly all done. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing well, of course. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing better. Been uh, I was going through it for a little while there. Still, uh, still getting getting out of that, but I'm doing better. <laughs> Recovery arc. Hmm. Legos from Denmark? I don't know, actually. I don't know where it's from. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we, I think I know what we're doing now. It wants me to like put these all on and then put this, the, the stuff in these, these leaves. But I kind of want to do it before. Like, if a few pop out and I have to put them back on, but it feels like it would be much more dangerous to be putting them all on on the tree than off the tree. I don't like to break from instructions, but just knowing that I'm kind of clumsy, that feels like a bad idea. Because <laughs> it wants me to leave them constructed, put them on, and then put like these leaves and stuff on them.
So I think I might do that first. Going off book, rebel. Oh, I know. I don't like to do this, but I'm a I'm a I'm a little rule follower. But I'm also very clumsy, and I know this about myself, so... <laughs> Taking preventative action. Lego box, Lego blocks, rather, originated in Denmark workshop of Ole Kirk Christensen, who began making wooden toys in 1932. Two years later, he named his company Lego after the Danish phrase, Lego, play well. I don't know anything about Legos. I, this is my first my first set of Legos that I've uh, uh, done possibly ever. But they are fun. I understand the appeal. I get it now. <laughs> okay. So, we set these aside, and now, now it's kind of decoration time, I think. Does it matter where can these go on anything or are there specific spots for each of them? I hope there's not specific spots for each of them. <laughs> yeah, I think you can kind of put them anywhere, so. some very cool builds for even moving statues yeah i've seen a lot of cool stuff um and looking at more about it online and some like other like lego adjacent companies and stuff that that make things like uh there's uh quite a few there, there's a, a few sets i found online that i want to order probably won't be able to do that too soon, but when I can, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, these are different. Well, this is very different. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. We might be able to use them. These we don't need at all. Oh! Got a, got a man overboard. We'll see if the pink pieces work. If they don't, we'll take them off and we'll use the green pieces. I guess if they don't work, we don't even have to take them off. We'll just put them back in the bag. That they use for some living pills are actually little frogs. <laughs> I 
be these ones, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Oh my gosh, they are little frogs. <laughs> That's so funny. I never would have noticed that. <laughs> I can't, I, I, I heard people mentioning about like frog, frog pieces in the, the bonsai tree. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I thought because the green, I thought it was these. I was like, it's like, I don't, are they part of a frog build? I don't get it. Stick some little froggy dudes here and there. The frogs work with this? They will work with this, okay. <laughs> uh, hello here, I'm finally able to catch up with stream. So happy Aqua, thank you so much. I'm glad you're able to make it. We're just uh, finishing up our bonsai tree for the night right now. <laughs> I was just thinking about how like normally doing this this kind of thing is. I'm not letting it be stressful, but it's all it's sometimes it can be a little stressful for me when you're trying to like decorate stuff and you want it to like look. You want it to look like a little bit random, but like you don't want it to be like, but you have to make sure it's like balanced randomly. <laughs> like you can't have too many like pieces that have like frogs all in the same place or too many frogs that are on one side or too many, I'm calling them frogs now, too many of these like pink petals. <laughs> <laughs> I might stick a couple of the actual flowers in, but I, I kind of prefer the colors of the, the lighter pink. I like the, uh, with the green a little bit better. This is honestly very uncharacteristic of me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not usually, uh, I don't usually divert from directions, but like this is a uh, back, kind of back on the TTRPG topic. This is something me and uh, another player in our group have, have talked about before, because um, like in in uh, Worlds Without Number, there is something called a unique gift that you can take, sort of as a um, uh, they're called fo uh, foci, uh, and they're sort of equivalent to like a feat in D, &D. Um, and there's one called unique gift where essentially like you work with your dm and you just kind of it's kind of just like essentially a placeholder for like hey if you got your own idea and your dm approves it use that and just call it this feat call it unique gift <laughs> um this foci and uh one of the other players in our campaign uh, really likes doing stuff like that. And I always love seeing like what she does with it and everything, you know? Um, but in like, like I'm generally not like I, 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 I'm sort of the, with, with TTRBGs, uh, kind of more in the camp of like, uh, limitation breeds creativity where rather than trying to figure out how to work outside of the bounds of the rules or or coming up with stuff that isn't in the book or whatever i like to try and figure out how to make what's in the rule set what's in the book what's in the system work for me um rather than trying to figure out a way around it or a way to add to it i guess um and there's a, like i don't mean to sound like there's anything like wrong with that or anything 
like it's like I said it's super fun and some people just prefer like that kind of thing for oh, for their creative outlets it's just, for me it's just sort of a, a different different way of going about it <laughs> so like with my my TTRPG characters I will I have very very uh like sparsely chosen uh, to, to do uh like that sort of thing like a little bit of a little bit of, a little bit of homebrew but just not often We're not we're not quite in cherry blossom time just yet. We're just starting actually. I think uh, the season, so we'll keep the actual flowers a little more sparse. <laughs> Maybe one. back here all right I think that'll be I think that's enough pink <laughs> and I think in here they use leaves to cover all these like center pieces so we'll do that I know I've still got this one up on here, but I'll probably just leave this one plain. It'll be kind of the, the center anyway, I think, so I don't think that'll be a problem. <laughs> Popping in to hopefully catch the end of stream and say hello. Hello! I hope you're doing good, Kip. Gotta redo the leaves every season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta keep them current. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, we're just, uh, we're not ending quite yet, but we are probably approaching the end of the stream. It's good to see you, Kip. I hope you're doing well. been taking some interesting turns lately you're telling me <laughs> mm. I wanted to pop in earlier I was caught up with stuff I wanted to quickly ask however whether or not you have plans for posting YouTube again in the future um so I'm kind of avoiding that question in general right now just as a uh, heads up so I I unfortunately cannot give you a very satisfying answer. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm a little stressed, a little overwhelmed <laughs> for, for, for a while. Um, had some, have had some, uh, personal issues I've been dealing with, um, mental health, etc. So I've just been, and you didn't do it. You're, I just want to make sure you know, you're all good. I totally do not mind. <laughs> the question at all uh just just explaining kind of why i'm why i'm avoiding the, why i'm avoiding uh answering for for a sort of uh greater chat on everything as well um but yeah so just trying to keep low stress right now um it it's it's not a question of if it is a question of when i will be posting on youtube again it might be soon, it might not. I just, I'm just not in a place where I feel comfortable making any estimations right now.
<laughs> That's fair, let's try to go and if you feel ready to return, happily wait and we'll try to catch streams again. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I've just been I've I've sort of reformatted everything right now to keep uh keep as low stress as possible. <laughs> Made some some stream changes. Um made uh no real changes necessarily to youtube that would require me actually uh <laughs> posting to uh to uh have some to, to be making changes but Just been taking care of myself as best I know how. I hope you're all doing the same. And if you gotta do that too, if you gotta take a step away and let people know, hey, I'm just taking care of myself right now. It's nothing with you. It's just it's a it's a it's a me thing. <laughs> you know, I had to. Uh, I had to tell a few people that, you know, where I was like, hey, I'm not doing so hot right now, so if you don't hear from me, I'm just taking care of myself. I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> and even that, like, even that was only something I did, you know, when I had the energy to do that. I didn't, I didn't try to push that out of, uh, push that, uh, I guess pu push myself to do that, you know? You gotta be easy on yourself sometimes. <laughs> In other fun news, I'm currently playing a sci-fi TTRPG called uh, called Lancer, and the character I'm playing takes a good bit- Oh, that's- that's sweet! Thank you, Kip! Lancer is very fun, I highly recommend it. I'll have to- maybe I'll look into it sometime. <laughs> I was like, uh, learning about a new TTRPG. Yeah, the fact that it wanted me to put these all on, like, on the tree is kind of wild. <laughs> that would not have gone well. <laughs> Just in general, I'm really glad for the bit of all. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. it. Means a lot. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just you know lately been a matter of learning that I I there's not a right way to do a lot of things. There is a way that works for you, and sometimes there are ways that don't work for you. <laughs> and I've just realized I need to stop trying to do things the quote-unquote right way, and I need to do them the way they work for me. Mm 
Look, actually, let's put it here. Okay. I think that's all of our pieces. That might be it. We might be done. We might have a bonsai tree now. Okay, there we go. I was like, I don't understand how to stick these on. <laughs> I figured it out. Brained. Eventually. pieces on there. Looks, uh, might look a little funky without any, I think. Get this last one to the slot. There we go. There we go. There we go. Spread it out a little bit. Right. 
I think that's our bonsai tree all done. I think that's our bonsai tree all done. Alright, so let me see if I can tilt this to the side and show y'all. Yeah! We gotta get all the angles. We gotta get all the angles. The sum of the angles. We can get all the angles. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That's our tree. It's so cute. I like I like mixing the pink with the green. That's like I, that's kind of gonna be. I, I I kind of have moved more to that color combination over the pink and turquoise. Uh, you might have noticed some of the colors in my model have slowly shifted to be more green over time. <laughs> A little more sea foam, which is very into like the the strawberry mint sort of sort of uh, combo. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, I've been sitting on my ankles for so long. How long have I been sitting on my legs? Jeez! Oh. <laughs> Ouchie. Alright, I think we'll probably finish up with a healthy snack. Still got my little uh, tangerine, whatever it is. I still don't know what it is. <laughs> Here. <laughs> very little, very petite, very tiny. <laughs> Hello, runaway frog. Well, yeah, there is our bonsai treat. That was so fun. I really enjoyed working on that. I really, really enjoyed that. There were a couple couple moments <laughs> couple troublesome moments but overall it was quite relaxing <laughs> big fan my OC just keeps getting more pastels close to the light watermelon col color combo yeah <laughs> I uh I simply saw uh, Kamroji in Demon Slayer and said ah a new aesthetic <laughs> A new aesthetic for me to steal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just have a nice healthy snack. And then we'll finish up for the night. But yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed working on this with you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me while I while I did that. I think next we are gonna, you know, we'll go back to the, uh, the high cue puzzle we were working on the other day, but there was just was something in my brain said, no, you need to do a Lego set now. You become interested in it, and today is the day you need to start it. <laughs> so that's what I did. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so probably, probably high cue puzzle next. Oh, I, I mean, if I want, if I decide to stream tomorrow, I decide to stream tomorrow. But right now, I'm thinking, uh, you know, after streaming for a few days in a row, I'll probably take a break tomorrow. I don't want to burn myself out immediately after coming back. So. <laughs> Mm 
My model always makes me look like I'm chewing with my mouth fully wide open. And I promise you I'm not. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed working on this. Yeah. Yeah, it was very fun. I'm glad. I, I hope it seemed like people enjoyed the uh, the uh, process of, of just watching it, hanging out and just chatting while we while we work on some Legos. So I'll probably keep it constructed for for a few days, and then. Uh, but I just don't have the room for like any sort of like other display stuff like this. So I'll probably uh, package it back up afterwards and, and break it down and everything. But we'll see. Like I said, I I like I was more interested in the experience of building something rather than specifically like being like oh this piece i need to in my home now <laughs> you know and get my gross like food waste oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> all right let's see We've got some chill vibes we can go hang out with. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's see. Ooh, I got some people doing some stream that might be kind of chill. Oh. Nice place to go just to vibe. Let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> they the fanboy doing ASMR and Legos. <laughs> that's uh that's that's me. <laughs> Seems I joined at the wrong time though. Oh I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah, we are unfortunately just starting to uh to finish up. We just finished up our uh, our bonsai tree. Yeah. Build some of our pebbles. There we go. I don't want to touch this too much with my tangerine hands. <laughs> Yo, what's going on here? What's going on here? I see some Axel. I see some Christmas Town Sora. All right, all right, all right. I think I know what we're gonna stop by. Uh, glad I found you for later, if nothing else. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope, hope, hope I get to say hello again another time. <laughs> Hoping you can get your hands on that succulent set in the future. Yeah, me too. Um, I might actually... I saw some succulent sets that were from, like, um, sort of, like, Lego... I don't want to say, like, off-brand, but, like, competitors, I guess. Um, or, or companies that, like, do Lego-like toys and sets and stuff so I think I, I I might I might try going for um a like a non Lego brand one next time and see how I like it um I don't know we'll try it <laughs> I love your model by the way oh thank you I appreciate that <laughs> I've been I've been messing around with it a little bit lately getting the colors and everything more more where I, I feel like I want them to be right now. I've, I've I tried to move away from just being like, because I think when I first uh, first got the, the the model, my design and everything, I, I wanted like 
something that was very like a purely uh uh just like cutesy and pink and everything and that was what i really liked at that time but i think now i've um wanted to 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 push in just a slightly more mature looking direction um add a little bit of sort of ethereality to it <laughs> So I've made, I, I made my eyes a little bit paler. Um, everything is a little more desaturated. The blush is a little heavier. So i uh, got a little darker circles under the eyes. <laughs> uh, did you make, oh, no, no, no. I didn't, I certainly did not make this. <laughs> I wish. Um, no, I, uh, uh, but in VTube Studio, there are, uh, ways where you can actually like change the colors of like layers in your model and stuff after your model is like already done um which is a really really cool feature <laughs> yeah 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 like i can't make any big changes or anything um but you know if i want something that's pink to be a little more purple or if i want something that's blue to be a little more green or I want a color more saturated or pale or something like that. Then those, those sorts of things you can do pretty easily. <laughs> you thought you were an artist too and I just hit the mega jackpot? No, I wish, I wish, I wish. <laughs> One day I hope, I hope, to, I, I, I used to draw a little bit like in high school and everything. I hope to get back into it one day, but we're taking it one step at a time. <laughs> All right, but I think we're going to start getting ready to raid here. No raid message or anything tonight. Um, we're just going to go say hello and chill out with a uh, at an art stream. We're going to go see some some vintage BL. <laughs> All right, say uh, say uh, seems like they've got a pretty uh pretty relaxed sort of uh thing going on so i think we'll head over here and say hello well thank you all so much for uh coming and hanging out with me tonight i had a good i had a, a, a wonderful time getting this all finished um it's nice seeing like the the product of like hours of work that has resulted in a thing <laughs> it's been nice so Thank you all for coming and, and joining me for uh, for doing this, for sharing some of the, the Polaroids and stuff earlier and everything. Oh, I also did just quickly want to mention too, because this was something, again, we talked about a little bit yesterday. Um, I was looking at, uh, like, get, I, I'm considering actually moving to a flip phone, back to a, a dumb phone from my smartphone eventually. I was looking more into the, the idea today. <laughs> and I've found some things that might work, so I'll keep you guys updated on uh, some of the fun stuff with that. So, but I look forward to uh, to talking to you guys later. Wait, I just read your name. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love your YouTube content. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> all right, but I will see you all uh, next time in the next couple days. Have a good night, good morning, good time zone, goobie.